What up? What up? Welcome in to another edition of First Strike. We got a big pay-per-view event, UFC 305 in the land down under. Down there in Australia, going to be facing off with a huge card. Lots of great fights on this thing, and you guys know the deal with First Strike. We have become the preeminent location and destination to catch all your early best bet fighting action, beating line moves, and then making them happen, getting them to the victory window. And we're going to do it again for you guys with three big fights that we're going to break down here. Before we get into it, I'm joined by the Apex Predators of the Octagon. I got MMA Jeff and Subhuman Gaucho. Check it in, boys. How we doing, Sub? Talk to me, my friend. Lots of fun last night. Looks like you've recovered. You ready to go? You excited about 305? Yeah, it was a lot of fun last night, man. Uh, long day, but yeah, I'm, I'm feeling good right now. It took me a took me a little time to recover, but uh, yeah, man, I'm I'm really excited for this card. Uh, talk about a main event, man. Two uh, two great fighters, Israel Adesanya, one of the best to ever do it, and uh, DDP just on a run. So I'm excited to see how that shakes out. Um, very much looking forward to this card. How you feeling, Jeff? I'm looking forward to it as well as always. And uh, what do we got? Six fifteen start. Um, I believe there's 12 fights before the weigh-ins. I hope we uh, continue on with the 12. And as you'd said, this is a solid main event. So uh, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. I think there's a lot of sneaky plays on this one. Should be a lot of fun. We're looking forward to talking to you guys about these plays here. We're going to have a finished type of prop, a fight to end by. We're going to have a nice little dog spot that's catching some steam. And we're going to give you guys a parlay as well between the three of us. So, a lot of fun. It's time to roll the sleeves up. It's time to get to work. It's time to talk about how we're getting paid with this big UFC 305 card. And we got our boy, Subhuman Gaucho, going to kick it off for us. He's got a little Xi Jing Li, the number 43 fighter, 19 and 8 on his career. Carlos Prates at 19 and 6, number 33. And uh, Sub. What a way to start this thing off. I'm looking forward to hearing you talk to us about the path to cash, my friend. The floor is yours. Light it up. Yeah, looking forward to this one, man. Jake, uh, Jake Schilling, solid guy. I really I really like him as a human being. Um, Big-time UFC veteran. Had a ton of fights. I think he's, he's in his, his teens now as far as uh, UFC fights. Never been KO'd. This guy's got a ton of toughness, solid chin. Good all-around all good fighter. Um, you know, he can get his takedowns and whatnot, has some trouble with control. My big question here is, uh, what is Jake like? And can he stand up against the pressure of one Carlos Prates here? Uh, Jake's 36 years old. He's coming off of a really serious neck injury. I had to go to get some surgery for it. And he's been out for uh, going on 23 months. It's close to two years by the time this fight goes off. So we don't really know exactly what he's looking at. But what is his training schedule like is also a big question. He's been doing some reality TV out in China. He's a big star over there. But to give you a sense of where the UFC thinks he's at, his last two scheduled fights were against Tony Ferguson and Michael Chiesa. These are not top-tier fighters anymore. These are also guys that are on their way towards retirement probably sooner rather than later. And he goes up against a guy with a ton of steam. Eight straight fights in a row, Carlos Prates has won by KO. All eight of those fights in the first or second round. Super dangerous guy. He's going to be the taller guy, much longer guy with a six-inch reach advantage. And this guy has what the kids today call aura. He just has it, man. He, uh, he looks extremely dangerous out there. I don't think Jake can take him down and hold him down in any meaningful way. And I think the longer this stays on the feet, the more likely it is that Jake is going to suffer his first KO loss. I really like Pratas here by KO minus 110. Love it. Love to see a little finish type of prop out there, Jeff. Yeah, absolutely. Brings that I'm going to roll in Mike's fight here, bringing us to the co-main event. Kai Kara, France ranked number five versus number seven ranked Steve Ersig. Mike, how you feeling? What are you thinking? Get a co-main event. You guys know the theory for me. A lot of this comes down to the percentages, the X's and O's, and the steam report. Always try to give you guys the best numbers before fight night so that we can try to maximize the ROI from these plays. 
And look, I got to look at a little Kai Kara France. This got a lot of fun written all over it here. Kind of, kind of a little judge trickery that I'll talk about in a minute impacted the uh, trajectory for championship fighting that Kai Kara France, you know, has really earned. He's been in the UFC since 2018. He's got a 24 and 11 overall professional fight record. On the other side of things, Steve Ersig's coming in there with a 12 and two, fresh off a loss. But you look at his career with the UFC. Three of them have gone to decision. One of them has been a knockout, um, you know, situation as well. So, uh, you know, a guy that isn't really finishing a lot of fights early and often. On the flip side, you know, we see Kai, well, he's coming off of back-to-back losses. This being said, though, I think a bounce-back opportunity for this guy. You know, we look at the situation. His first loss, look, he got knocked out. He lost. It was a former champ situation in Brandon Moreno interim title fight. And he took the L. How did he rebound? When you look at his career, uh, he does get a lot of UNAM decisions by the judges because he shows the technical proficiency, the chops for hanging in the UFC going all the way back to 2018. And uh, what an upset. Just by the visual eye test, everybody thought Kaikara France won that fight. And obviously two of the three people that mattered did not see it that way. Uh, and he lost. You know, what that set up was Ersek, not Kai Kara France, getting the title shot out there. And I think he's going to want to exact revenge. You know, we look at Ersek, young career, caught the right opportunity. Talk about being in the right place at the right time. And he gets to go out there and fight Pantoja. But he gets pieced up. He gets his ass kicked. It was his first loss, obviously, trying to come back and bounce back. But Kai Kara France got the deeper resume when it comes to the UFC. He's put the time. And I think the matchmakers gave him this fight for a reason. And this is the big steam report of the week. It opened up as a plus 180 dog. We're down to 140s, 135s, and 130s. So I'm jumping in. I'm going to take advantage of this thing now. I want to get it while it's hot. I locked it a plus 140. Cara France goes out there, gets this fight done. I don't care how he does it. Just come home with the W. And uh, let's pad our bankrolls, boys. Yeah, I like it, Mike. Um yeah, I, I liked I liked KKF from the beginning here, and uh, the money is coming in on him. I expect that might get a little closer to a pick em before uh, fight time goes off. But uh, in the meantime, we've got a WMMA fight. Has been our bread and butter lately. Just been killing this uh, this women's market, man. So uh, take us away, Jeff. Where are you going this one? I gotta say, can Casey O'Neill's body hold up as a young twenty six year old to give her a longer career? She had a uh, she had a knee surgery, a two knee surgeries. I'm sorry, after a blown ACL, um, she was out there about a year ago saying she wanted to fight in the top ten. She came out her first fight and uh, lost by unanimous decision. The second fight she had, she lost by submission. She is now 0 and 2 after making the comment of fighting top ten. Uh, the knee surgeries, uh, you know, she had six seven months of rehab. Um, it took her a while to get back, which an ACL is never a, a, an easy injury to recover from. But either way, she came back 0-2. She's a striker, a grappler. Um, she's going to want to keep this thing on the feet if she has any, in my opinion, any method of uh, getting this thing done in her favor. Um, Santos is, a, uh, in my opinion, more skilled fighter uh, on the ground. She's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu, you, uh, undefeated as a pro fighter. Uh, she missed weight two fights ago. She came out there last, just fought last month. She came out there and uh, crushed it with a first round submission. I think uh, Santos is going to uh, take her to the ground and out wrestle her with the jujitsu style. And uh, I think uh, Santos is going to end up out uh, outright winner on this one. Uh, the money's been going back and forth. I didn't want to take her on the money line. I figured I'd try to make this a little. Uh, a little more of a positive play here. So I'm going with subs play Prates on the money line and Santos on the money line for plus 116. There we go. I love tightening it back together to uh, subs play to kick this thing off for you guys. A nice little plus 116 parlay. And it brings us to the end, boys. Nice work today. You guys can see on the screen there, three plays for you. Prates KO by sub at minus 110. Cara France for... Me at 140, and Jeff bringing us that plus 116 parlay between Pratas and Santos. Looking forward to a big Saturday stream. You guys know the deal. 6.15 p.m. Sports Money. Going to give you guys our best bets, our best efforts throughout the card. We're trying to stack it high, let it fly. 
And we'll see you guys on Saturday, boys. Nice work. We'll see everybody soon.